we're, you think we're, we're going to see that? Yeah. We're still quite positive, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, based on what, what we've seen so far, we're sti st we actually saw the first couple of companies mm -hmm. beating expectations. Um, you've had, for example, CIC, mm -hmm. Boitis Power, uh, AEV, AEV uh, and Union uh, Morocco, Union Bank, yeah, Union Bank. Yeah, performing quite well. It's just that last um, earnings season, they did quite well. What the problem is what we are looking for um, is reason to actually upgrade our earnings forecast. And although results were quite strong, that was something that was uh, missing. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, we'll see it this time. All right. So we have here uh, the last quarter, so second quarter's earnings growth. Uh, do you see, for example, with energy or with telco, all these ones in the red, do you see these improving? Of, we have utilities, telcos, and energy. Well, um, Definitely for Telco, mm -hmm. we're still quite negative. It's um, it's largely because they're transitioning. I mean, from a personal basis, for mm -hmm. example, you, I mean, we, we use more data yes, now. We yes, we use more data now. And of course, for them, we know how difficult data is uh, right now, the, the congestion and all. So they actually need to do a lot of uh, capital mm -hmm. expenditures. So you agree with what Fitch said when they said that, you know, um, they're facing high capex. Yes. Intense scrutiny from regulators and, of course, this whole competition yes. issue, right, is still hounding them in the lawsuits as well. Yes, so yes. you agree with that. Okay, yeah. so let's move on to the peso. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of analysts, apart from you, have said that uh, these could possibly weigh in or weigh down third quarter earnings because the peso has fallen to like a 10-year low. Do you agree with that? Um, it could to a certain extent, but um, not to the point that... Um, the companies would be, uh, you know, hurt in the immensely. I would say, um, on the positive side, um, um, companies are not unlike in, during the Asian financial yeah. crisis. People were borrowing in U.S. dollars. At least now we're we're not. We're seeing smart that. enough. Yes. Yeah. yeah. If ever, it's more of, you know, imported products being more expensive, but. To some extent, actually, you know, these companies were bracing for um, a weaker peso already j earlier on during the year, which, mm -hmm. of course, it only materialized now. So, mm -hmm. in some ways, you're kind of prepared for it. So, so they've kind of priced yeah. it in, sort of. What do you mean? Oh, what about this Fed rate hike? Uh, what do you, when do you think it will happen? <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh. If you look at the, I think Bloomberg yeah. has uh, the probability. The yeah. Uh, we'll it's at December. Around, yeah, yeah. Seven, 72 percent mm. probability of a rate hike come December. So, I mean, if you ask me, I think why the market is down, it's largely because of that. Exactly. Um, so it's not the Duterte, it's not um, yeah, I all mean, these things. Yeah. The, the other things have a little bit of impact. But if you remember earlier this year, people were thinking the U.S. was going to do like a 100 basis point mm -hmm. increase over four, four rate hikes. Um, and then markets rallied after it never materialized so <laughs> so now you know they're actually gonna do it and mar markets are reacting negatively so so really i mean that that really is what's driving the markets down and even if you look at the uh complexion of uh, what's being sold down like property stocks mm -hmm. so so you kind of know it's partly due to rate hike fears and, okay you know. but i've been actually looking at who's been buying and moving stocks because you know sometimes it's a good bargain day right my sale today tomorrow well so yeah. i look at the terminal and col actually does a lot of buying and selling. I guess you're rebalancing, also looking for bargains, right? Which stocks are good to buy right now in this current environment of I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well, yeah. I mean, we've had some of the stocks that we've been recommending a long time, mm -hmm. um, like uh, First Gen. We've been recommending it quite a bit because mm -hmm. uh, uh, we like the fact that earnings are going to grow and valuations are still cheap in a market where almost yeah. everything's expensive. That's true. Um, mm -hmm. And hopefully, I mean, come this third quarter, we're just hoping that um, earnings would be the catalyst because um, one of the factors dragging earnings is uh, low coal prices, which has hurt um, their selling prices. Which is, you know, it's kind of an indirect yeah. thing. It's kind of like a, yeah. a political thing, even between them, right? Yeah. So, okay, last question. Where do you see the index at the year end? Oh, that's a very, very tough question very, to answer very right now. Very tough <laughs> question. Um, um, initially, we said around 7,400. Um, we're now looking at uh, 2017. So, we're actually mo looking more of 2017, 8,400. So, get this year over with? Yeah, it's 8,400. For next mm -hmm. year, yeah. 
So a little bit of earnings growth and still around maybe 18, 19 times PE. So they're about so eight four for next year. This year, I mean, I don't think people will still be buying. You know. <laughs> So maybe selling. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. As usual, a pleasure. April Lee okay. from COL Financial.